Hey Andy here from Andy's Tech Tutorials. In this video I'm going to show you how I compress my images to then add to PowerPoint presentations, to my uh, WordPress websites using a tool on my MacBook. Now it's really important that if you are in particular uploading your images to your website that you do have good quality images but that they're not too big in file size. If an image is taken straight from your phone and put onto a website for example, you'll find that it will probably be a very high resolution image and it will probably be very high in terms of file size. What that will mean is that your image may take longer to load, especially if you've got multiple images on the same page, which can in turn lead to users not wanting to go onto your site or leaving early. If you correctly compress your images, you can still retain um, a high quality, but you can strip out a lot of the unnecessary information and data and keep that file size lower, which means not only will it load quicker, but it means that it will use less of your designated storage space within your hosting platform. The tool that I'm going to use on my MacBook is Image Optim. I'm going to show you how to use that in this short tutorial. It is only available for Mac users and I'm going to demonstrate how to use this on my Mac. But what I would say to you is you're best to download it from the link that I've put in my description and not using any of the apps that are available in the App Store under the same name because those are not legitimate ones. The legitimate one is only available from this website and the great thing is it's open source so it's completely free to use. As well as that, it's also very, very easy to use. There are other versions available. If I go to other versions on this page, you'll see that whilst it's only available for Mac OS users, you can download similar tools for older Mac OS users, Linux or Windows. And helpfully on this web page, again, it's in the description, you can find the um, tools that the creators of ImageOptim recommend you use if you're a Linux or a Windows user. Now, I have already installed this on my computer, so I'm just going to take you through how we can quickly compress an image using this tool. So let me just load it up here. Um, so here is image opt-in here. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is before you actually optimize any of your images or compress them, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go into settings just down the bottom right here. So this little cog here. Now in here, you can set up your compression for your images. So you'll see here, you've got your compression for JPEG, PNG, and uh, GIF files. Now the interesting thing here is we have enabled lossy minification. And what it says here is that makes files much smaller but may change how they look. Essentially what this is going to do is it's going to compress your image and it may alter the appearance to try and reduce the file size. If you want to use lossless compression, which means it compresses the image, it will remove unnecessary pieces but without a drop in the visible quality, then you want to make sure this isn't checked. Okay, but what this means is whilst you'll have a higher quality image, the file size will be considerably higher. So personally, where possible, I do try and use lossless. Essentially, if I'm using for, you know, a website or a PowerPoint presentation where it's being viewed online, it's not being printed, and I don't need an extremely high quality um, image, then lossy compression is usually fine. If you're printing images, then it's probably something you'll want to steer clear of. But if you enable lossy uh, minification, then you can choose the quality setting. So obviously 50% will generate a lesser quality image, but a much smaller file size. If we go up to, um, you know, sort of 90% here, then you're gonna have a bigger file, but it will be of better quality. So with this, you kind of have to just play about. You've got to bring your images in, see how they look, if they're suitable, then you can obviously keep the um, percentage here. If you want to drop it slightly, you can. And you can basically keep doing this until you reach a point where your image is not of a suitable quality. And then you'll know that you maybe want to increase slightly. So there are various settings for um, different image types. If I go into optimization level here, you'll see that you can set um, to either fast, normal, extra, or insane. But again, be careful here because the optimization level will adjust the quality of the image. So to be honest, I usually tend to leave this just one on, uh, on normal. And then if I go into general, you'll see that you can enable on the left-hand side the type of um, profiles. And then you'll see in here you can choose what metadata and color profiles you essentially want to strip out. So for example, it says strip JPEG metadata. So this takes out all of the kind of background information that we don't 
really need to know about, okay? Stuff that's not really important when we're just uploading an image to a website. Now, I'm gonna close this one down here and you'll see here I have two images. So this one here, this Clubhouse one, if I go into that and go to get info, then you'll see that it is a 3.5 megabytes and it's quite a high resolution image, this one. It's like three, you know, thousand odd pixels, I think. If I look at this one here, what I have done is I have opened this and I have dropped the size of this image. So the image size here is actually about 1200 by 1600 um, and it's brought it down to about 614 kilobytes. So if I open it up, you'll see that actually it's a fairly good image. If I open up the original here and put it side by side, so on the left we've got the original image and on the right we've got the one that I've resized and it's considerably smaller in file size but actually visually there's not much of a difference um, for us looking at that on screen. What I want to do now is I want to drag my file that's 600 uh, kilobytes across and just put a little bit of compression on it so that we can drop the file size. If you're uploading an image to um, WordPress or a website you don't want it to be too small but obviously anything around about sort of between I would say two and 400 um, kilobytes is, is probably a, a good size. If you do anything higher than that, then it's gonna take a little bit of time to load and anything lower, it may be of a kind of a, a poorer quality that might not be suitable. Um, so it's one of these things you have to kind of play about with and test the speed of your website. Um, but anyway, I've taken this one here. Now all I do is I just drag it in. What I usually do though before compressing one is I just hold the option key and copy it, okay? Because once I've compressed this, I can't undo it. So if I compress it and there's way too much compression on it and it's a really poor quality, then I would have to then resize this original one and start again. So I've dropped the um, compression here to about 86%. I'm gonna drag it on and what it does is it shows you the original file size and then how much you've saved. So I have now compressed this file and it's gone from being um, 614 kilobytes down to 345 so it's basically saved about almost 50 percent if i open up the original and then open up the copy um, compressed one you'll see on the left this is the original 614 and this one here is the compressed one and again just looking at it the you know there's slight subtle changes in the color here but it's nothing too you know, too major. Um, but visually, I think most of us would agree that looking at that, that's more than than suitable for a website. You'll see though, if I take, um, again, I'll just copy this original one. If I change the compression here right down to 50% and optimize at, let's say, insane. If I move this one across, you'll see that it's taken it and it's saved about almost 80%. Now, if I open this one up, so it's 222, two, two, pop it in there, and then I'll open up the um, original. Let me just double check that is this one. Yep, that's the, that's the original there. So you'll see side by side, again, there are slight changes with the color and, and the kind of various elements here, but actually, even then, it's, it's not too bad. So you've taken an image which is basically 3.5 megabytes. We've dropped it down to 614,000. Um, and then what we've done is we've dropped this one down again to about one, what was it, about 140 um, K. So there's there's a big difference in there, a huge amount in terms of saving. We've saved about 70% um, on the, the 614. So this tool is very, very useful. It's a super quick and easy way to compress your image and just to drop the file size, which makes it a little bit better for using online. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please do give it a like. Comment below if there's any other compression tools that you use or let me know what's your usual kind of standard when it comes to size for your images for use on websites or on presentations. And of course, if you haven't already done so, please do consider subscribing to my channel. You can click on that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell for any notifications. I've got plenty of other content on my channel, so please feel free to have a look at those other videos. But thanks for watching.